All right. Well, same thing on this one is we've got that binomial that's being squared. It's added to something and it equals zero. The problem with this is our first instinct is to just kind of take the square root of both sides of this. Because it's nice because then we've got the square root of zero and we've got the square root of squared of, of this squared binomial. But that's not really how this works because the binomial is not really the y minus four here. It's become this whole both the terms there in green. So that's no good. And that's that's why we don't just take the square root of both sides right away. Um, what we need to do is isolate the y minus 4, that quantity squared by itself. So that when we do square root it, then we've got just a y minus 4 to worry about. All right? So in other words, we can't have this plus 18 added to that y minus 4 squared stuff. So I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides. And, and hopefully this one will answer your, your question there. Is now this gives us a y minus 4 squared equals negative 18. See now at this point, if I, if I square root both sides, which is what I'm doing, then I get rid of that square, but now it kind of gives me an absolute value. And it's going to equal... Uh, the square root of negative 18. But I'm going to change that real quick. Uh, that, that's a 4 to uh, i times the square root of 18. And we'll simplify the square root of 18 later because we can. Now that I have that absolute value, I'm going to break this up into two separate equations. So I've got y minus 4 equals i times the square root of 18. But y minus 4, on the other hand, equals negative i times the square root of 18. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> well, at this point, and this works for both equations, by the way, I'm just going to add 4 to both of these equations on both sides of the, on both sides of both equations. So right here I would have y equals, I'm going to make this 4, and that was a positive i times the square root of 18. And over here I've got y equals, that's a 4 minus i times the square root of 18. <clears throat> so unfortunately for us, since this is not finished, and th this is why it's not finished, is we kind of got to look back at our square root, roots, radicals, simplifying those, factoring them, however you want to say it. Um, the square root of 18, let's, let's take a look at that. Because if I can find a pair of numbers that are being multiplied into there, or a perfect square as a factor, then uh, I can take the square root of that. And specifically, I'm looking at 9 times 2. So in other words, this is the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. The square root of 9 is a perfect square. It's 3 squared. So the square root of 18 is really, if we were to simplify it completely, 3 times the square root of 2. So now I've got 3i times the square root of 2 for both of these. And then I've still got the 4 plus 3i times the square root of 2. And then 4 minus 3i times the square root of 2. Those are my two y values. That would make that original equation a true statement. All right, this is... It's not necessarily a shortcut, but it is something that if we look at those two answers, right, it's 4 plus, and then on the other one, it's 4 minus, okay? So when we got to this point there in red, let me rewrite that. Let me rewrite that. Now, this is just the rule, so if it doesn't help you out, ignore it, okay? Because some of you guys have expressed that that absolute value stuff is a lot better. But once you start square rooting both sides, especially if it's a square like that, then you really got uh, y minus 4 equals the positive and negative square root of 18. Um, and that's one way that we can show both those answers with one expression. So, for example, 
right here I would add 4 to both sides and then I would have y equals that's a positive 4 and then I would have plus or minus again if I had simplified that fully I'd have 3i squared of 2 so maybe that shows you kind of how quickly you can get the answer but it's not necessary that you do it this way